Unit 5 in the AS Economics syllabus finishes with fiscal policy, monetary policy, and supply side policy, and really focusing on how those instruments are used to solve or to address two problems, such as the balance of payments, disequilibrium, and the issues around inflation and deflation. Um, in A2, you go into more detail with real GDP output, unemployment, uh, the price level, and uh, I think international trade. But here, it's kind of briefly introduced. So uh, let me walk you through what you need to know. First, fiscal policy, you should just know by definition. I have in parentheses that it's a demand management policy because fiscal policy primarily focuses on aggregate demand. You could make the argument that reducing corporation tax could uh, also increase aggregate supply, but that's something you just want to keep on the side for now. But be aware of the fact that, yes, you know, cutting corporation tax will influence aggregate demand and aggregate supply. There is an overlap there. But generally, we use fiscal policy in demand management, so focusing on how it can manipulate aggregate demand. Understand that it composes, it's consisted of, it consists of taxation and government spending. That can be taxation indirect, direct, on consumers, on businesses. Also think about what the government spends money on. And then when they increase spending, what happens? When they cut back spending, what happens? Contractionary versus expansionary policy, essentially looking at when the government decides to increase aggregate demand or decrease aggregate demand. When would they use it? Why would they use it? Uh, what would be the result? And that brings me to the next point, which is the impact on GDP, essentially the same as output, whether that goes up or down, uh, inflation, the price level rising or falling, and unemployment increasing or decreasing. Understand that these two policies, contractionary, expansionary, fiscal policy, have different impact on these three factors. Also know what it looks like on a graph and be able to determine uh, when the economy is in short-run equilibrium, long-run equilibrium, and how it would look with changes of fiscal policy. And understand the limitations of fiscal policy. Uh, the, one of the biggest points argued is the time lag, that fiscal policy is not something that is formulated immediately and then takes effect immediately. It's something that's got to be developed, and then for it to be effective, we need some more time. And then also, how much change is necessary, and what's the, the duration of that change? So we have similar questions about monetary policy, but to be clear on what is meant by monetary policy, make sure you understand it's manipulating interest rates, the money supply, and exchange rates to impact aggregate demand. And like fiscal policy, we have contractionary and expansionary policy. So monetary policy is demand management, can increase aggregate demand or decrease aggregate demand. And then you want to know the resulting impact on GDP, inflation, and unemployment, similar to before, as well as understanding the graphic representation. What are the limitations of monetary policy? How much is enough? Uh, what's the length of time? What are the advantages of monetary policy over fiscal policy? These are questions you should be able to answer uh, if you want to reach a comfortable level before you hit the multiple choice. Then you have supply side policy, what it is by definition. How is it different to monetary and fiscal policy? Mostly that supply side policy is focusing obviously on aggregate supply and it's trying to reduce the, the burden on business. So allowing businesses to do business easier, that might be by reducing regulations, uh, reducing corporation tax as I mentioned before, um, or taking a look at increasing the productivity of the, or of the factors of production or potentially increasing the, the quantity. A uh, way you could think about that is like if the government had a more relaxed immigration policy for talented people, they could bring more people into the country and thereby increase the productivity of the factors of production because the labor force would uh, be more skilled. You want to think of aggregate supply as kind of like a magic bullet because monetary and fiscal policy, they both affect aggregate demand and there's a trade-off between decreased unemployment and higher inflation. But with supply side policy, arguably that's not the case. So you can increase GDP, decrease inflation, and decrease unemployment at the same time. Obviously, it seems like a magic bullet, so there are evaluative points to look at. You know, supply side policy is more of a long term policy, arguably. And then to understand when it would be more suitable to use supply side policy or why a government would pursue it. Again, know this and on a graph, know what it looks like and be able to manipulate something from the short run to the long run. When you cover the balance of payments disequilibrium, 
be sure you're clear on the distinction between expenditure reducing policies, expenditure switching, why the government would pursue those, what is the result if they do, and what is the overall outcome, what is the intended outcome of that. And then think about when they take these policies, what's the impact going to be. Uh, in addition, not just these policies, but monetary policy, fiscal policy, and supply side policy, what effect they would have on the balance of payments. Think current account, capital account, financial account, and make sure you focus on you know specific parts. What's going to happen in the balance of trade? What's going to happen in capital flows? And be, be sure you can understand how changes in policy would affect the balance of payments in the different accounts. Inflation, deflation, I've kind of mentioned it already, but monetary and policy, fiscal policy can reduce inflation, reduce output, but increase unemployment, and then vice versa is true. Supply side policy can improve all of them by bringing down inflation, decreasing unemployment, and increasing output at the same time. Just identify situations where they would be used, and then look for that in kind of a either a graph multiple choice kind of answer or they'll explain to you now which policy would be most suitable for this type of inflation. Also know what is meant by hyperinflation, the difference between deflation and disinflation. Uh, beware of how inflation is calculated. I kind of touched on that before. But the, the bigger thing in this section is going to be a familiarity with how policies impact inflation and deflation what happens when these policies are used and why are they effective. All right, if you've done that, you guys have covered all five units with me. I would just say if you've enjoyed these videos, leave me a comment below or subscribe and get in touch with me at enhancedtuition at gmail.com if you have any questions. Good luck with your exam.